In this video we'll see how this binary number written in scientific notation would be stored in a computer using 32 bits in a format we call floating point. Now there are several different floating point specifications for different numbers of bits but they all adhere more or less to a standard developed by the IEEE organization. Now the first thing to notice about this representation is that we can get this same value in many different ways by moving this binary point around. For example, if I were to subtract one from the exponent but I wanted to have the same number, it would be like I had already multiplied this value by 2. I remember multiplying by 2 shifts the point over, so this value is equal to 10.11 times 2 to the 11000. So this value, this exponent, is 1 less than this, therefore that binary point moves over 1. Similarly, if I were to add to this exponent, I would move the point the other direction. So this would equal 0 0.1011 times 2 to the 11010. So these are all equal, but we want to store this number in a format where we only have to look at certain bits and we can't store all these symbols. So having these extra ways of representing the same number is actually an annoyance and a hassle for us. So we are not going to allow these variations in our format. Instead, we're always going to reduce any floating point number we have to this format. This is normalized form. And so it's normalized because the point is moved as far to the left as possible with a 1 immediately to the left of it. Now because we are using binary digits, any non-zero number will always have a 1 somewhere in it. So we will always be able to move this binary point to be immediately to the right of the leftmost 1. And a nice advantage of this is that it means we don't even have to store this 1 in our 32-bit representation. So we've already eliminated 2 because we're working in base 2. Now we've just eliminated this 1 because we know it will always be there. And so at this point, we really just need a way of representing and storing these 3 bits in these 5 bits. And here is how it would actually be done in a computer. So here is space for 32 bits. Now one thing that hasn't been accounted for yet is sign. So whether or not the number is positive or negative. So this is a positive number and we actually do need to store that information. So we'll have one bit which will tell us whether or not this is a positive or negative number and a value of 1 will indicate a negative value and a value of 0 will indicate a positive value. So here is our sign bit. The next 8 bits will be used to store not the exponent, but a biased exponent. And I will explain what that means in a moment. We have 32 bits total, so the remaining 23 bits can store this sequence here, 
This is known as the significand. It is also known as the mantissa, but this term has other meanings and therefore significand is preferred. So we have one bit for the sign, eight bits for a biased exponent, and then 23 bits for the significand. And we are going to assume that we always have a one before this binary point. That makes the significand very easy to compute. We simply take these three bits, 0, 1, 1, and then the remaining bits here will be zeros in this space that we have for 23 bits. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So the significand looks like this. The sign is zero, and now we need to figure out what the biased exponent is. So a biased exponent is a value that has some bias value added to it. So in the case of this 8-bit uh, sized area, the bias will be 127. Now the reason for that is that with 8 bits we can represent 256 values and 127 is half that. Specifically this roughly half that. 127 is 2 to the 7 but minus 1. That means that given this value here, which is 25 in decimal, to get the biased exponent we will add 127, which in binary is seven ones, and so we get a result of 152, which in binary, we'll add this up, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 in base 2. So here we have 8 bits, and these are the 8 bits that will go here. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now you may ask yourself why we bother biasing the exponent in this way. Why not just put the exponent here? Part of the reason for that is that we want to support negative values, negative exponents. So by having our biased exponent be the result of adding 127 to the actual exponent, we can support some negative numbers. But we already have a negative number representation to its complement, so why not just use that? And the reason for that is that with a biased exponent, it's very easy to compare two exponents and quickly find out which one is larger. Whereas in two's complement, if you look at the raw binary numbers, negative numbers actually look bigger than positive numbers, which is a hassle for many floating point computations. Regardless, this is the sequence of 32 bits that represents this number. And we can analyze this in a bit more detail, the sign is 0 or 1 for positive or negative. The 
biased exponent can take on any value from all zeros to all ones. Now because we are adding 127 to the actual exponent to get the value here, that means that the range of values we can represent is negative 127 to 128, or more generally, however many bits are here, it's, it would be minus 2 to the 7, minus 1, up to 2 to the 7. Now we will see in the next module that this range is not fully accurate for real IEEE floating point numbers. There's a few special cases that modifies this. And finally we have the significand which if this is all zeros will represent a 1. From 1 up to then if all 1's are here it would represent one point followed by 23 ones, which is easier to represent as, or to write down as two minus two to the negative 23rd. Although if you were to put this into decimal and round it, it would be approximately one point nine 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 approximately. So the significant is anything in this range. It can be made positive or negative, and then the exponents can make the magnitude very large, or it can also make it very small with negative values. However, there is one very common, very important value that we are missing that is impossible to represent as I've currently described this, and that is zero. There's no way to represent zero here, because if we always have a one to the left of these bits here, then no exponent we can come up with will make that one go away. And that will be the topic of the next video.